Oh, so that my fart smell. Okay. <laughs> what an intro that was, eh? Those kids then, on the mopeds, I think they were doing their uh, CBTs. They looked like they were absolutely shitting themselves then. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? There's a big blue light! Ah! Well, hello everyone, how's it going? Just as a pre-warning, by the way, just in case, just, you know, just to say, just right now, right? It hasn't rained in about two, three weeks. In fact, mm, two and a half, something like that. And... If it so happens that the day that I decide to step out on my bike after everything that's happened that I'm about to talk to you about, then I have no luck on my side at all, and I'm going to find the nearest fucking cliff and eat myself off it. I'm going to wank myself off as I die though, so that'll be interesting if you ever see that on the news. Probably me. Man jumps from cliff whilst tossing off. I'll try and aim and come in your eye whilst I'm there. Anyway, hello, how's it going? A uh, bit of while since I've been on this thing. We shall get oh bloody hell. We shall get into that. Issues being well, issues being that there have been issues. Uh, I've not had the bike in a while. This is the, this is actually the first time I've been out on the bike in a long well a long time. It's been about three weeks now. Because I had lots of issues. Um more issues to add to the list of growing issues with this bike. And it's not looking good. Uh well I say it's not looking good. The, the, thankfully the guys at Chester's KTM have absolutely sorted me out, as usual. A very, very short notice and they had a, you know, waiting list through Christmas. But they very, very kindly slotted me in. Um, I had to get the bike recovered and we're going to go into all that nonsense. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned to find out why go on, brethren. So, I'm just off to get some e-liquid, then we're going to go to JNS. Uh, I'm actually after some new gloves because my gloves have decided to shit themselves. I'm looking for some sporty gloves. I've got a certain budget. I shouldn't really be spending it, but I'm going to because I kind of feel like I have to in a way but anyway no so issues yeah issues have been prevalent on this bike uh, again and again there have been a lot more issues on this bike than with the speed triple and I've still got this bike so we're gonna go into why I've kept the bike what's going on with it I'm giving it back and you know all that adult bullshit so yes stay tuned and uh, oh we'll get right to it just after I've gone to pick up some liquid so I shall see you in a second Right, it is going dark, so I'll try and be brief. I managed to actually get out of work early. I was on at six today. So yeah, I mean, long story short with this, uh, I had an issue, if you've seen on Instagram, if any of you have me on Instagram, you, you would have seen this before, you know, a few weeks ago now. This is the first time I've been on the bike since getting it back, like I said. Um, and I couldn't turn the bike on for a few weeks. Um, basically, I was coming back from my missus's house, went to go turn the bike on and it wouldn't turn on. Spent a while dicking about, trying to figure out if it was a switch, if it was, you know, this or that, and it wasn't. It just randomly decided to turn on when it wanted to and not when it didn't, so... Yeah, oh, look this way, dickhead. So yeah, I went through a phase of just not being able to turn the bike on. Now, I ended up getting video evidence, and it's probably on the screen right now, if you... Because I did take some videos for, for, for evidence, for warranty, warranty claims. But I, had to end, I ended up having to get the bike recovered to my address, uh, from my address. I managed to get it home that day. And then ended up having to get it recovered uh, from the RAC, which, just like the last endeavour, the, the last trip went, did not go very well at all, because the RAC are a complete bag of shit. Uh, so I ended up having to fucking dick about for, for four or five days for them to be able to come pick it up. Um, you know, and I said to them, look, fucking, if I was at the roadside right now, what would happen? And they said exactly what they said last time, which was, you'd have to fucking wait. Just leave your bike in the middle of fucking nowhere, and get on with it which I do not agree with the RAC you know comes as part part and parcel of having a KTM you get this special fancy RAC recovery which doesn't work because it's a piece of shit fucking school time in it so all the fucking poncy dickheads are about with the big Land Rovers you can pick up little Timmy don't have kids people the world is too fucking full yeah this thing won't wheelie it's uh, <laughs> It's way too cold, the traction is kicking. I've got my traction way up on this at the minute because it's very, very cold. So yeah, I ended up basically getting it uh, recovered somehow. Like I said, the RAC were rubbish. And after the RAC came eventually to pick it up, I managed to replicate the issue. And the guys at Chester KTM came to my rescue. They were, they were fine. They were really good as usual. Um, they've been really good actually. 
uh, surprisingly. You know, the other KTM dealers that I've been with um, have not been good. Staff Triumph has always been, and um, probably will be, the best dealer that I've ever been with, to be honest, because they, they were really, really good. Um, but Chester KTM, definitely up there. So it was with them, and it was already it was already needing to go in for a few problems, to be honest, because I don't know if I showed any of you, but the front fork protectors, the little red things, and no, not the little fucking travel bands that everyone keeps fucking moaning at me about. I'm talking about the, on the Evo, they're blue, the little rings, the little plastic rings that sit on the fork leg itself, not the fucking travel bands, for God's sake, man. So they needed to go on. They previously went in for a fix, quote unquote fix, what the hell is this guy doing? Fuck me. And the fix was they tried to super glue him and the super glue didn't hold, which, you know, was comedic and could have seen that coming a mile off, but hey, it was worth a try. Anyway, so, you know what? The thing is with those guys, it's like, it's a warranty claim and they have to take the entirety of the front end off. They've got to pull the forks through just to be able to put these fork protectors back on. They, it was a bastard of a job just for, you know, two little poxy things, so. Oh, fuck me. Bring on summer. I really can't wait for it. This bike is doing... It does not like the salt. It does not like it. I'm going to have to get a new chain and sprocket come spring, which is going to be fun. So, yeah, basically, uh, they, they fixed that problem along with this problem, along with a, a few other problems. And basically, it looked like the headstock bearers needed to be, re be replaced as well. Uh, it turns out that they didn't need to be replaced. They just needed to be nipped up. Uh, and, but yeah, the fork rings have been put back on. Again, this is all free of charge because, you know, the bike has a warranty and stuff. Anyway, the issue was fixed. You know, it didn't take them long. And it turned out to be a fault with the antenna, apparently. Uh, so this down here, um, that, that receives the signal from your key fob, uh, and the immobiliser, uh, there was an issue with those, there was a fault. Now the fault, they didn't tell me what the fault was, uh, or I think they did, but they didn't really go into that. Um, thank you to Lewis from Chester KTM, he's been he's been the guy that sorted me out, a fantastic guy, a really nice guy. I can't, I honestly can't big them up enough, they've been really good to me, getting me in as soon as possible, all that good stuff. He had, you know, no issues with them at all, they've got me in reasonable time, every time, and they've always been really good to me, so they'll be good in my books for a while. And so yeah, the issue was with the, what are you doing? Teach your children how to cross a road. Yeah, go on, I'm not gonna go. Good fucking God, man. Anyway, yeah, so the issues with the antenna and with the immobiliser, there were error faults and error codes coming up that they had to, all they did was clear the codes, so hopefully that won't happen again because the root cause of that, I don't know what it what it would have been, to be honest, I don't really have a clue. Yeah, they've, they've cleared the ECU out, they've, they've, they've reset the ECU, they've, they've cleared everything, um, and we don't know what the problem was, but it's been fixed now. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, oh, nearly a crash, nearly a crash. Oh, fuck, that would have been great to get on camera. So yeah, it wasn't the battery, the battery voltage was fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all, it was just... Oh man, I've missed this thing. Uh, one thing of note, actually, since getting the bike back, is how tight the bike feels now. It feels really good. Uh, I don't know what they've done. Um, it feels like the suspension at the front has been changed, when I know it hasn't. Uh, I think what they've done is actually they've messed with the tyre pressures, because I have my tyre pressures low. I think they must have bumped the tyre pressures up, because if it's in with them and it goes out with, you know, to what, you know what's, what's beyond KTM's recommended spec, shall we say, and I have a crash, then... I don't know, legalities. And having looking at my tyre pressure gauges, it looks like they have actually gone up. Because it feels a lot more flighty now, it feels a lot... But the thing is as well, on the corners, especially in the cold and the wet, it feels very, very unnerving. It feels like they're about to slide from underneath you, which is not nice. Um, and I think that one, my tyres are pretty much done on this now. Uh, and it, I could get maybe another 500 mile out of them and I need to think about changing them. So I'm going to go for something a little bit stickier, I think. But then saying that we're coming out of winter now, so I'm not too sure. So I'll have a look, I'll have a think about that at some point. Um, but I have missed this thing, I have missed being on it. Um, and just, like I said, it just adds to the list of other problems, because there's so much going on with this bike, it is annoying. So what I've actually had to do, is I've had to go in and make a complaint, and it's raining, fuck. I've had to raise a complaint again to the finance company to hopefully give me a little bit of time off, just because uh, it's a bit ridiculous this now, to be honest, I've had so many issues. She wired it. Uh, yeah, so couldn't find any gloves. 
but you know wasn't really anything that really sort of took my fancy to be honest you don't you don't get much for 100 quid these days i'm afraid yeah i just I, I don't know about anybody else but i really really hate big thick fucking gloves and these guys have been really really good i remember i didn't really get on with these very well for the start because of the the palm but now they've bedded in they're really really nice and it's a bit of a shame the rip because these have these have kept me you know going for for years now i hate spending money <laughs> one of the lads in there he follows the channel hello mate and he lives near me and he had a lot of issues with his S1000 so he's chopped that in and he's got himself an MT10 and you know with all the issues that I've got with this bike I, I am really considering um, trading it in I don't want to because it, it, it's such a good bike when it works it's such it's got such character to it you know and I don't want to I really don't want to and you know, everything on it feature wise has been it's been really good to be honest it's just the electronical issues you know the electronic issues and then the, the some of the mechanical ones like you know the fuel pump blowing up on me that kind of thing they just let it down they really have and you know, I'll let the speed triple go for a lot less than this thing, you know, and I've kept with this and I don't, I don't know, I really don't know what to do. So, in essence, past these issues, I've gone to the finance company and I've raised a complaint, a formal complaint to say, I want something done. I've given two options, you either take the bike back or they give me a big, big boy discount, you know, and we said this about the speed triple and look where that happened, you know, look what happened with that. So, they offered me 900 quid discount on that speed triple, by the way, um, and they thought that was fair, so uh, that's why it went in the end it went because the finance company yes <laughs> they thought that was a substantial discount this is my only form of transport this is the only bike the only bike this is the only thing that i have to get me around and i rely on it um, and i can I'm, i can't be in fear of turning the thing on or lack of turning it on in my case recently you know it's like i understand and people will sit there and snigger and and you know get down your throat about oh you've got a ktm you know what to expect there are so many pro people that have had this bike that haven't had these problems you know and i keep hearing that the reliability issues with ktm are, are definitely definitely being sorted out and to be fair with ktm they've been absolutely on the ball when it comes to any kind of issue that i've had you know so it's um yeah, you fucking stay there, you should be... Yeah, they've been on the ball with any issues that I've had and they've fixed it as, as well as they could do outside of, you know, RAC and other out external factors. They've sorted them out pretty pronto. For, what, for that, I'm very, very grateful. But that, again, you pay for that service. You shouldn't have to fucking wait around like a dick and be treated like a pile of crap, you know, like... You are paying them. You are paying them. You know, fuck this. I needed to do that, I've been dying to do that for a very, very fucking long time. You know, sorting the gear lever out on this as well is um, it's so nice now, so nice. But no, after I've got it back from, from KTM, it just feels a little more buttoned up, I don't know why, it feels a lot, it just feels tauter, it feels a bit more agile, it feels like, I don't know what they've done, but maybe some of my torque specs and stuff went bob on and having them you know having them tighten the front end up all over again that might have helped the front and rear brakes seem to be a lot more responsive at slow speeds for some reason i don't know why i can't imagine they've bled anything but i don't know might have done i mean lewis who's the guy at ktm um he told told me that the you know the, the service engineers and stuff they've the, the mechanics that they've been over the bike and they've they've done stuff for me and they've you know you've They've tidied things up apparently and, and they've sorted a few odds and ends out that they saw on it um, in terms of like wiring and stuff. They've changed the wiring around and all that. So yeah, I mean, they could have done something. It just feels taut, you know, the, the front end and the, the bike underneath me feels a lot more, a lot more responsive, uh, especially when it comes to handling. It just feels really, really flickable. Uh, and I didn't leave, them, didn't leave it like that. I didn't leave it feeling like that, should I say. But yeah, that's me, boys and girls, I think. You know, I'll let you know what happens with this thing and what happens with the complaint and the finance company and all that bullshit again. Because we're going to have to go through it all again. But yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> well, that's been me, boys and girls. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon, I'm sure. And until the next time, sort of out. See you soon. Ta-ra. Bye. <laughs>